on your photos, people see dreadlocks. They see the English name, the mushrooms. Give me an African name that will market you better. <laughs> this guy didn't know the mushrooms was a big name back home. So we come back home, we start asking on the radio. Uh, we're thinking of changing our name, give us an African name, but it has to remain mushrooms. <laughs> okay, let's then talk about your 90s, this era of your 90s. Yeah. But let, let me know your journey. How was that for you? The 90s was very good. Of course, we opened our studio in uh, 1990. We did the first edition of the Zilizopendwa in 1990. Oh. And uh, we toured Ethiopia in 1990, 1991, 1992, you know. And things were really working. So we moved from our home studio to Madaraka Estate in Nairobi West. Mm. We took the topmost floor, turned it into our office and studio. And now we were trying to balance between the studio and our creativity in the band. Mm. That played havoc on us because I was, I was the main sound engineer, the studio and producer. Yeah. So I had to be there through the day yep. with clients uh, coming in. Teddy was the administrator. So we had to scale down our, the rehearsals of the band. Mm. to try and push the studio. So the band suffered to mm. a certain extent mm. and the studio came up. And then while at the Mushroom Sound uh, Lab, as we called it, Mushroom Sound Lab Studio. Mushroom Sound Lab Studio. Sound. Yeah. Then we started a label, record label, Mushroom Records. What? Yeah. Who did you sign first? Whoa. If I don't know if I can remember, but so many artists, we, we signed up so many artists. And, what, and what, was the, what was the deal that a lot of them were signing up to? So what was it? Were you finding an artist? You, how did it work? Some would come to us, mm -hmm. we listened to their music, and then we said, yes, we can, we can sign you up to our label. Or some would just say, no. In fact, some would say, well, you have so much potential, but easy line here to, what we'll do, will record you or produce you at half the price. We used to do a lot of that. Mm. So for, for the record label, we signed up several artists whom we even promoted. You know, it was like we're going into a new space. Mm. We were learning, but also trying to give back to the music industry. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And... What would that entail? Recording for them a song? Yeah, a, a, an album or a song. Okay. And then releasing it, promoting it on uh, VOK mm -hmm. back then. Because we had made inroads now. We had a network at, uh, at the studio, many presenters, yeah. especially those from the Swahili service. Many of them were from the coast. Mm. Some we had gone to school with, like Billy Omala was my schoolmate at Ali Dina Vistram. Ali Salim Manga was Teddy's classmate at, no, Billy was my schoolmate at uh, Aga Khan mm. and uh, several others. Um, so we had this network where we produce you, we promote you in KBC, uh, VOK, and all of a sudden you, you grow. Yes. Mm. And then now, what, like, and how do you make revenue of that? From the distribution sales. Oh, yeah. the music. Yeah. Okay, okay, fine. That we used to sense. sell cassettes, distribute cassettes throughout the country and the, and the region. Okay. Yeah. You had, you had the network of how to yeah, do yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did you, use it by, you, did you partner with the Kasangas or, or you had your other River Road people? No. Or you had your own network? No, we had our own network. But Kasangas, how we got to know... I, I got to meet Kasangas. He brought some of his artists to our studio to record them. Okay. That's how I got to meet a fine gentleman, very gent uh, very good guy. And we are friends to date. We've been in some of these uh, uh, CMOs together. 
he brought um, some of his artists to our studio to record and they went on to get several hits from the recordings from our studio. And the gentleman is? Sorry? And which gentleman is this? No, no, no. Kasanga brought in his artists. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, the artists yeah. that were signed up to, to his label. Yeah. He brought them to our studio to record. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Um, so, okay, keep, keep on with this. I'm trying to figure out what happened. So now you're, you've got the record label, you've got the studio. Yeah. And of course, that means that the mushrooms is suffering because attention has been taken away from it. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. Then we, we, we came up with this idea, like I talked about Dorogonia. We said, why do we let people come and record in our studio and we have instrumentalists in the band? So we started selling this idea to many of the guys who came to record, either as solo artists, if they, were, they had had se session musicians, mm. then we'd step back, let okay. them do their thing. But if we see this guy has just come, he's looking for musicians, then the band would, would be there. Okay. At a fee. Yes. You see, I remember there was this, these two young guys, I can't remember their name. They had done a song in River Road. Yesu ni washiama, ni washiama. Then they heard about our studio. They came with this song. And I said, this is a hit song. I said, no, we've released it a year and a half ago. <laughs> it's not, they wanted to record a new song. I said, I don't think I'm interested in this song. It's your business, but if you listen to me, this song is going to be a hit. So they, they agreed. We didn't record the song they had come to record. We reworked that song. And they went to River Road. They became stars with that song. <laughs> <laughs> what is it about that song that you had had, or, or, the, the, or what makes it there was something a hit song? special in the chorus? Yes, yeah. yes. It's a it's sing a chorus that sing, sing along. along. Yes, you know. Yes. So we, we we made the instrumentation. The band did the instrumentation. I produced the song, mm. and it became a big hit in River Road. All of a sudden, the guys bought cars. <laughs> 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 so that's how, how, that's what we've been doing, you know, in the 90s. Yeah. And then we kept on recording, producing ourselves. Okay. No tours in that, in that time? Ethiopia. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, just the Ethiopia. Yeah, we went to Ethiopia, Djibouti, you know, and, it, within Africa. We toured within Africa. We went to Ethiopia, Djibouti, okay. Burundi and uh, the Seychelles oh, okay. in the 90s. The Seychelles? Yeah. How do you end up in the Seychelles? Our name, man. They, they just came looking for us. <laughs> <laughs> you know what we did? Yeah, I remember how we started uh, touring Africa. Yeah. That time, there was the Union of Radio and Television Networks of Africa based, headquartered in... Uh, the KICC, at the KICC, mm. Urna, they used to call it. Yes. So they came to us and said, you guys, we are taking uh, programs to all TV stations in Africa. If you're interested, you can come uh, uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll produce a video for you and we will take it. And we agreed immediately. We went, we shot a video of about, I think it was... 45 minutes, all our music. And then they sent it to all the te radio and television networks in Africa. Wow, wow, That's wow, when people wow, wow. started noticing us <coughs> in Africa and they started asking for us, you know, like Seychelles came, uh, Burundi the same way. What? To a certain extent, Ethiopia was the same thing, you know. That's insane. Yeah. Okay, so now that was officially your first music videos. Yeah. Like it was performances. Yeah, yeah. Performances. Yes. Before that, you hadn't shot a music video. We had done the one in, in Mombasa, the one I talked about, Burudani. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. 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 Okay, so, hey, hey, that's funny. So, anyway, so, what, okay, let's proceed with that. Uh -huh. So, 90s still, still in all 90s of these 90s productions, uh, videos, our own productions, and then uh, we get to... Somewhere around 2000. Before, before that, yeah. when you begin hearing this new sound of the Ted Josiahs coming up, and you begin to hear now this, and the technology is changing. Yeah. So now there's not guys that, oh, me, I, I just need 
a keyboard and it's got all its midi sounds mm-hmm. all the sounds mm-hmm. that i need are in there yeah what what does that do for you well it rocked us for i i have to be very honest it mm-hmm. rocked us when we hear bam hardstone with the uh, ohiki bam sijui nane na nini <laughs> they taking the always which we used to rule yes we went back and said guys we have to think and think very fast and that's what has kept us in the industry to date we reinvent ourselves almost every 5 years so this was the reason for us to reinvent vent ourselves i said we have to leave we can't compete with with these youngsters mm. because even the presenters in the radio stations were now changing yes. the their peers so they ukiwaambia mushrooms yeah i know my dad used to play your music <laughs> but they really don't want to touch our music on their program yeah yeah so we focused on going outside kenya ah touring and that's now tuliendelea hivyo paka towards the early 2000s when we decided one of our promoters in europe said you guys come here with dreadlocks you guys come here on your photos people see dreadlocks they see the english name the mushrooms give me an african name that will market you better <laughs> this guy didn't know the mushrooms was a big name back home so we come back home we start asking on the radio uh we're thinking of changing our name give us an african name but it has to remain mushrooms what were western akatuambia obuolo ah obuoba what were nyanza akatuambia obuolo wakamba akatuambia makuno and then jamaa costa said ah simujita nini uyoga tu that's how the name came in uyoga what yeah so wait me have not even known you changed your name to yeah for about four years we were uyoga <laughs> what? You guys are, you you are not loyal eh? you will reinvent the style right <laughs> so you changed your name to uyoga oh, but but here you are still the mushrooms, the mushrooms yeah it but can... even here we released some music under uyoga what so we did that toured <laughs> and then i think it was in 2000 and uh, either 1998 or 2001 or two there we reverted mm. to the mushrooms mm. yeah why did you revert because now we 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 were You're becoming that season yeah that season was off and we were already becoming family guys oh. i had gotten married my brother got married uh, you know now our kids our wives are saying ah, you guys are always gone you know <laughs> so we had to slow down you know like i told you no. earlier we we would go for eight months in the uae come back home for a weekend go, go somewhere yes. else it was becoming a bit dangerous yes <laughs> dangerous so we had to slow down watoto wakue nini now we are free man we are we're ready to go at it we were in london last year so we are ba- back, back on, on the track here yeah. no, i know this is so no let me tell you so a lot of artists um uh, and i feel like even this is a sort of soul thing where where life transitions are beginning to happen and these are not small life transitions it's i've gotten married it's i've gotten a child i've gotten mm. how do you balance that how do you how then did you reinvent yourself what is it that you did and also this other thing of i'm no longer the young man in the game eh, 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 there are some other guys who yeah, yeah. these guys are rapping better than me these producers are making better beats than me yeah. we've been through all that yes i actually that. feel like you've been full circle yeah but then here we are now your kids out of the nest oh. yeah <laughs> our kids are big in fact when when uh, Teddy our eldest brother who was the leader before I took over and the saxophonist fell ill my son is the saxophonist now what so he stepped into his uncle's shoes that's powerful because we are dreaming of or come we have a succession plan where in this game we don't know if it will happen or not of course they have to take care of their lives their academics which they're doing very well but Teddy's two sons one is a gifted guy playing almost three or four instruments the first born 
The second born is a bassist. My son is a saxophonist, plays saxophone and clarinet. And we hope these guys will take the mantle and take the mushrooms. Oh, like which Kenyan group has ever got it here? You know, we talked about Saudi Soul, but I'm honestly, I've never heard a Kenyan group say succession, like hand over the, but this is actually even globally, which band has, I've ever had, this is what you hear businesses do. We've seen it, what, what they do. And more so, we've admired, you know, corporates run by uh, yes. Chandari and all. You see what they do. Vimal Shah came in, his, his father started, and mm. we've been dreaming of that. Uh, my brother's grandson, I'm training him to become a drummer. What? He started off with percussion. We, we bring them, Bro, this we... size, we, we take them on stage with us so that they, they get the thrill and get the drill too. <laughs> <laughs> but this is up to them. We yes. won't force them to take over from us. It's our dream that they take over from us. But In we... fact, we, we are recording a new song and my son plays saxophone on that song for the first time. Mm. Yeah. This is such a powerful story. Okay, so I don't want to rush over this story. I'm not in a hurry to finish me. Me, I'm just, I want to just hear the story. So we get to 2000. And 2000 now, you're like, yo, uh, children have entered, uh, can be glo globetrotting like crazy. Number two, the sound, now the sound has changed. Completely. Now, hey, <laughs> if the Josiah was anything, even the Josiah is struggling to match up with this one. Because <laughs> it's yeah. now Ogopa who've come in like mm -hmm. crazy. Mm -hmm. The Kapuka uh, that we say was started, that we have realized was never really started, but uh, evolved, yeah. is now in play. What are you guys doing then? We had to sort of take a break from recording. Because honestly speaking, yes, we had, we had good music out, but that, that period was so intense. And we believed if we try to match up with these youngsters, mm. we'll be swept away. Mm. So we focused on live performances, a bit of some tours, and come on me na penda ku experiment, na ku research, that's what we, I was doing. Mm. You know, it's only now, like you see now, we released two singles in the last three years. Mm. But now we're going back to it proper because Ile Wave in Meteremka Kidogo. Okay. You know, when Ogopa came in, that wave was so high. Ah, that was a wave. Wave it kwa jubana, kina nameless, na uku pande ya uku kalif kina nonini. Ukutena Red Sun. Juakali. Eh, Juakali. Funny thing, you mentioned Juakali. Funny thing, then at, at the height of his Nino, I, I reached out to Juakali. I said, Juakali, we have so, many, so much music. Why don't you think of, I'm proposing, Something. let's do a colla collabo. Yeah. He laughed me off. <laughs> and then we share the stage some two years ago, before the corona at Koroga. Yeah. Juakali is performing with the band. That day I told him, do it live like Nasisi. That day at Koroga, Juakali tells me, Ajua Katana, Uliniambia, which is in a live band. Leo Tanyona live band. Five or six years down the line. <laughs> but I, I enjoy that. You know, mm. if it sticks in someone and they come and do it, not that I know it all. Tunawambia atujui yote, lakini tunajua mengi. Mm. And I'm happy he performed so very, it was my first time ever to hear Juakali perform with a live band. Mm. And he did it so well. So I wish that time he was agreed for us to do a collab. I went out to try and reach out to many of the celebs, like they call them at that time. But they were too big. They thought we were too old school. Oh, man, they're the ones who should be reaching out to you. You know, when I look at even what's happening in the West, all the hit songs, those are people who went into their catalog and went to the catalog of the 60s, 70s, 80s, they listened to music and they sampled and recreated those songs with a new school now. They have the privilege to have you without sampling 
Uh, first of all, they should even come and beg and ask for your catalog to resample and rework some of the songs. But imagine the power of also having you there singing on top. Yeah. And I keep giving them examples. People freak out to UB40's music. Do you know that 80 or 90 percent of UB40's music is yesteryear hits? What? Yeah, Red Wine is not an original. Most of their music is not original. They just reworked yesteryear hits. Mm -mm 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 -mm. And they came up with mega hits around the world. And this is what we've been trying to do with younger musicians. I'm happy uh, producer Toti from Mombasa took Ndogo Ndogo, he, he did that. Mm. And what's, what's his name? Kagwe. Kagwe Mungai. Yeah, Kagwe Mungai has Ndogo Ndogo in one of his songs, you mm -hmm. know. That's a chorus of one of our songs. But do they do it the right way? Yeah, with Kagwe, we signed up papers. We okay. gave him the permission. Okay. Pro producer Toti, we are the ones who have reached out to him. Okay. And okay. that that was a time last year or yeah last year where we ha we call in some young producers to Alliance Francaise, and and said, look, come for a listening session. Listen to some of our hits we, which you might not know. Pick up a song or two from here, right. and but they melted after that. They melted away. None of them came back. <laughs> what? How can the grandfather going go be the one who's <laughs> struggling to look for the son? <laughs> Man, this is insane. Uh, but that's such a part. Like I know somebody watching this. Their ideas are running. So expect a lot of phone calls after this interview. And I hope those who call are also serious and don't just go in. Don't just go and sample. You sample that is illegal. <laughs> You'll find yourself lawyered up. <laughs> One thing I want to say is all those guys have mentioned the names here. Yes, is with due respect. Yes, of I've mentioned uh, Juakali. Mm. If he knows it, he can say it's true or false. I've next mentioned Victor Say. Yeah. If I if I lied on this show, he has every right to say no. Katano mesema wongo. I mentioned Kina Suzanne. And all those that I mentioned, mm. I, with all yes. humility and due respect, mm. that's what I've done. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm aware that this video will go wide, fine, fine wide. So I also want people not to just get an idea of sampling and not follow the due process, because that's what that's unfortunately some of those things happen in today's. In, that's why I'm very happy to hear someone like you've signed papers with Kagwe. That's that's the due process to follow. Yeah. And you're here even mentioning him yeah. and honoring him and making out people go and listen to that song. By the way, links for that song is in the in the comments pinned. So you can you can and also on all, all DSPs, all digital service providers, streaming platforms. Uh, so yeah. So okay, so you guys now then what are you doing if you are silent in the music game because Ogopa and the rest are in the market? We're not silent. We're recording right now. No, no, no. Mm. This is this is oh, 2000. Oh, yeah. oh, back then. So we were doing like w what we were doing. Live performances. I, yeah, live performances. I went to, to, into a little bit of research and then recorded using the Mwanzele beat of the Giriyama. Mwanzele traditional beat mm. of the Giriyama. We re 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 released a couple of songs in that genre. Mm. But we like fused it with our own feeling and then we called it nzele mm. so whenever you hear people talk about nzele at the coast not mwanzele nzele that originated from the from mushrooms. the mushrooms that is so in that cool. interim period yes and released i think about three or four songs wow singles so you 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 say okay I get it. And what, when you said when you have live shows, where were you doing these live shows? Mostly corporate. Mm. Yeah, mostly corporate. Okay. Yeah. And of course, over the years, your, your price has increased, your price has increased, your price has pole, increased. Pole, pole. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to get to 300. You're, going, you're not, you're not going to change, you're not going to charge uh, what you charged last year because to be able to be a mafute, 300. What do you charge? <laughs> We're going to take a quick break here. We are in the 2000s. Uh, there's that small gap here of, of, you know, of what's been happening. 
uh, when Ogopa came into the scene and the rest of the noise, then we're going to come back and continue this story. Still got a lot to go, still has a lot of value in the conversation, so don't go anywhere. <laughs>